That which is alive hath known death, and that which is dead can never die. For in the circle of the Spirit life is not, and death is not. Yea, all things live forever, though at times they sleep and are forgotten. Henry Ryder Haggard, a novelist that not very many people have heard of, but he is single-handedly responsible for an entire genre of fiction known as Lost World. How many of you have heard of Raiders of the Lost Ark? Or Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World? Um, Tarzan? So many others talking about worlds that existed long before we were around, and the only reason we know about them is because people down through the generations told the stories, meaning they had children, their children had children, those children then also had children, and the stories kept going and they wrote things down, and people passed things on. Well, right now, in North America, I don't know if anybody is going to be left to tell our story, at least not in an accurate way with what's going on. There is a huge, massive, military psychological operation going on right now that is keeping people trapped in their own minds and in their own emotions in a way that is preventing them from doing the one thing that men and women are meant to do, and that is to have families and to continue on civilization. It is a level of evil beyond anything that I have ever even seen conceived in fiction. Now, breaking news alert. We have a brand new Battlefield of the Mind video just posted an hour or two ago over at the Patreon channel. And I'll warn you, it's not for the faint of heart. It's going to tackle probably the foremost issue going on in politics right now in a way that will make you wake up and see the truth. You won't hear it from the right. You won't hear it from the left. You won't hear it from the alt-right or the alt-left. You won't hear it from anybody out there because there's no real way to make any political hay out of it. But when you see the truth, it'll slap you in the face in, the face in a way that you'll not be able to deny it. Because it's an undeniable thing when it's directly shown to you it's only one dollar. It's only one U.S. dollar per month to join us over there. It's a speed bump. If I could make the speed bump a dime, I would. They won't let me. But it's the lowest allowable level I can charge to keep away the trolls and keep away those who would keep me from sharing the truth with you. How do I know? Who am I? In the military, my job was psychological operations. That's what they teach at Fort Huachuca, Arizona. I spent a long, very difficult, arduous summer there a long, long time ago learning the art of mind manipulation, and I can see exactly what they're doing. Let me give you a hint here. If you'd like to join us real quick, it's only a dollar. And if it's not for you, if you'd like to just remain in your emotional state, going from one feeling to the next, fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. But let me ask you a question. Those of you who are out dating in that scene, whatever age you are, I guess I'll start with the ladies. Ladies, you go out and you have dinner with a guy and things seem to be going pretty well. Maybe this is your second or third date and you're thinking maybe, maybe we could take this to the next level. And it's getting later and you know, on your second drink and he looks at his watch, those who still wear watches, I guess, perhaps his phone would be a better way to say it these days. He says, boy, look at the time. Look at the time. I I would love to stay longer. We're having a great time, but I've got to go. I have I have someone at home, and you ask, oh, I, I didn't realize you, you have kids? No, no, I, I, don't, I don't have kids, but Mr. Snugglebumps, he's been missing me this whole time we've been on a date, and I just haven't been able to stop thinking about him for the last hour this entire time and normally on friday nights we snuggle and watch netflix he has to be so lonely i have to go i have to go apologize to him ladies what would you think about that and it goes for those guys out there out there bitching it goes both ways guys if you're on a date with a, a girl and she keeps looking at her phone 
keeps fidgeting. Everything else seems to be normal, but you ask her, is, is there something um, that's uh, on your mind or do you need to be somewhere? And she's like, you know, all my little fluffy nuddles, just, I can't st stand to be away from them for more than a few hours. I just can't. They're just, they're my life. I love them. You'd run the other way, wouldn't you? You'd run the other way. If I guess if there's an official woman card, that would be revoked too. Now, what's the net effect? The net effect is what? An entire generation of people. An entire generation of people is going to think that's okay. That men and women just need to be friends. Just need to enjoy each other's company for the, the sake of the conversation and the killing of the time. And all of our time and energy needs to be focused on more rewarding pursuits. No babies. No babies. No families. Now, some are asking, cool story, Maki. What does it have to do with you see, there's an entire group of people out there who haven't had such luxuries. And strangely enough, being that they're almost all Roman Catholics coming across our border, they're not confused about what it takes to make families. They don't really give so much of a crap about Mr. Fluffernuddles or Snugglekins back at home. They start families men and women get together and they're not pals, they're not buddies. They do what we used to do in this country 50 years ago. Maybe even as recently as 40. Guys, girls, if you get with somebody and they just want to be friends, go the other way. Don't waste their time. You're destroying our civilization. You're destroying our country. You're destroying our society. These people are saving it. Oh, Monkey, I can't believe you open board. If, believe me, I would have much preferred, I would have much preferred these two people have gone home together and had two kids, three kids, four kids. That would, believe me, my first choice. By far, but that's not the case, is it? And besides, not only is that generation and people like that not having kids. You know what they're not doing? They're not teaching anyone that hard work is its own reward. And they're not teaching, then by definition, their kids that hard work is their own reward. And even if they would do the hard work, they couldn't do it as well, and they would want twice as much to do it. Generation Z and millennials are not going to be the concrete guys of the future. They're not going to be the bricklayers of the future. Do we need concrete guys and bricklayers? We sure do. We need people that can run sod, run a cat, grade a lot, put in sprinkler systems. Is that Gen Z? No. Is that even modern Americans now? No. We need guys that can pave roads and repair roads and work a shovel, and drive a truck. Is that Gen Z? Is that modern America? No. Do we need these people? Desperately. Framers. Roofers. Guys that can swing a hammer and put a shingle in. Guys that can drive a forklift to lift the crap up there. Gen Z? No. Americans? No. Insulation. Drywall. Guys that can run mud. Gen Z, your kids, their kids, nope. And I don't normally do this, but I'm going to read, well, sometimes I do, but I try to avoid as much as possible. I'm going to read an article from the Trump era. Everybody's like, well, I can't wait for Donald Trump to be president again. And I, I'm going to read an article that was written in 2017. And I want you guys to listen to it. Because if you think these things aren't all connected, because you've been watching Fox News or CNN or whatever you're watching, I'm going to show you how it is all connected. 
a landscaper's, quote, higher American plan ended with bringing in Mexican workers to finish the job. By Tracy Jan, October 5th, 2017, Denver. The first day on the job for the 39 new hires at Jesus Chewy Madrano's landscaping firm started as soon as they stumbled off the bus in the early morning groggy and stiff from the 13-hour trip from the Mexican border. From the Mexican border, October 5th, 2017. Ready to work? Madrano joked in Spanish before the men had a chance to use the bathroom and eat breakfast. The 63-year-old grandfather, wearing a cowboy hat, stuffed his hands into the pockets of his jeans and grinned. Madrano, founder and owner of Cocal Landscape, had spent more than $32,000 recruiting and securing visas for the Mexican migrants after scrambling to find Americans willing to do backbreaking work under the Colorado sun. With this crew's arrival, he thought the season might be salvaged after all. Madrano's extraordinary recruitment effort, which included three days in Ciudad Juarez while the U.S. consulate processed the work visas, encapsulates the complex relationship between American employers and temporary foreign workers. In landscaping, tourism, seafood processing, and other seasonal industries, employers are desperate to find, read white, Americans who will stay on the job for the pay they are able to offer. $14 an hour is the starting salary at Madrano's firm. Until now, those industries have leaned heavily on a visa program for seasonal workers called H-2B visas. But Congress has reduced the number of available visas by nearly 30% from 2016. And President Trump's promise to limit legal as well as illegal immigration and protect American workers has Madrano worried. For the men stepping off the bus, some of whom have worked on his crew for years, this could be the last season. Opponents of the H-2B visa program say the foreign workers steal American jobs and drive down wages. Madrano, too, says he would prefer to hire locally. Madrano, too, says he would prefer to hire locally. Importing temporary labor exposes his company to too much uncertainty every year. But there are simply not enough Americans who want the type of jobs he offers, with regular work only between April and October, especially in a state with one of the nation's lowest unemployment rates. Over the past 25 years, Madrano has increasingly relied on the guest worker program to grow his landscaping business, until this year, when Cocal was denied visas for the 160 Mexican laborers it normally gets. Congress did not renew a 2016 rule that exempted quote-unquote returning workers from the annual H-2B cap, effectively cutting available visas from 85,000 to 66,000. When the Trump administration unexpectedly released 15,000 additional visas for migrant workers in July, Madrano pounced, even though the landscaping season was nearly over. He welcomed his best workers back to Cocal just before Labor Day. He recognized himself in these men whose stories and economic fates are intertwined with his. The men, 22 to 66 years old, had the same motivation to leave their families as he did when he first came to this country from Chihuahua 44 years ago. Work. Antonio de Jesus Gomez ordinarily makes a living shimmying up 40-foot trees trying to avoid snakes as he picks avocados in his home state of Michoacan. His fellow migrants from all over Mexico are farmers, house painters, taco vendors. They earn, on average, the equivalent of $100 a week. That's when the work is steady, which it often isn't. As landscapers now, the workers will make five times as much as they would in Mexico, even after taxes. So when supervisors in fluorescent orange safety vests circled the newly arrived crew, Gomez jumped at, jumped at the chance to start immediately. He'd slept six hours on the bus and eaten a breakfast of yogurt and muffins, bought at a gas station rest stop in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Quote, it's what I came for, said the 28-year-old. Now pay attention. Whose wife is five months pregnant with their second child. Quote again, to give something better for my family. Gomez changed into his Cocal uniform, a long-sleeved gray polo shirt and black baseball cap, and hopped into a truck with a supervisor. See, these people aren't confused about what their role in the world is having families. They drove to a municipal water treatment plant where Gomez was reunited with his father, a foreman who had started at Cocal as an H-2B worker, but is now a legal U.S. resident on the company's permanent staff. After a quick hello, Gomez poured gas into a weed whacker and got to work trimming the lawn around two storage ponds of reclaimed wastewater. Madrano was 18. 
the first time he crossed into the United States from the Mexican border town of Puerto Palomas in Columbus, New Mexico. He picked the seeds out of two truckloads of red chilies at a ranch for $2,000, then caught a bus to Denver where an acquaintance connected him with a job at a cemetery. Immigration authorities sent him back to Mexico, but he returned to Denver within days, eventually becoming a landscaper. It was 1973. Twenty years later, Medrano started Coquel. By then, he had married, become a U.S. citizen, and was a father of three. In Coquel's early years, Medrano said, he gave work to undocumented immigrants, just as work once had been offered to him, but he later decided that it was not worth risking his business by breaking the law. That's when he turned to the H-2B visa program, initially recruiting family and friends in Mexico. Medrano hired his first crew of nine migrant workers in 1997. As his company grew, the number of H-2B workers expanded to 160, accounting for 40% of Cocal's total employees the past few years. Quote, those guys, without pushing them, do the work of one and a half people already here, he said. But it started bothering me that I was relying so much on them. I knew one day we weren't going to get them, and that was this year. Madrano said he went to great lengths this summer to recruit Americans to mow lawns, plant trees, and fix sprinklers. He put up a digital billboard over the highway that flashed, We're hiring in Spanish and English. He interviewed anyone who walked in. Quote, we hope they're breathing and have a pulse and we hire them, he said. He raised the hourly wage for unskilled labor to $13.95, 50% more than Colorado's minimum wage. He stopped firing workers for absenteeism, including a foreman who went AWOL during a two-week drinking binge. He hired more women, allowing mothers to work just the hours their children are in school, as well as high school and college students on summer break. And still he was short-staffed. Some showed up to orientation only to say, quote, I'm not going to do that for $14 an hour. I'm not going to do that for $14 an hour. Mr. Snuggly Bump doesn't like it when I'm gone all that time and I come home all hot and sweaty and tired and we can't go do all our fun things. I'm sorry, but that's... I see people talking about, they're taking our jobs and you can't go to touch at the border. Lazy ass effing Americans won't do this work and the work has to be done i'm not going to do that 14 hours madrano recounted a new hires unaccustomed to work boots complained of sore blistered feet oh no some walked off the job after three days of the 222 american workers hired since february only 73 remained Economists say businesses would have better luck attracting American workers if they offered competitive wages, but Medrano says he pays as much as his customers could support with entry-level wages hovering at the industry's state average. Any higher, he said, I would drive myself out of the market. Quality control dropped this summer because supervisors had to stop overseeing and pitch in. Customers complained of dry spots on lawns where the sprinkler system was not reaching. They grew angry over how long it took the smaller crews to complete each job. Competitors began to poach, and Cocal lost $1.7 million in contracts. Then the Trump administration, after heavy lobbying from industry, made more visas available. Cocal had to submit paperwork showing that the company would suffer permanent irreparable harm without hiring migrants. The company's request was approved within two weeks, and Madrano was on his way to Mexico to meet the workers. Quote, it's a little like a band-aid. Ramiro Espinoza, a 39-year-old father of three, jumped when Cocal came calling. It goes on and on and on. It goes on. You get the idea. You get the idea. You see, you don't think this is tied to what's going on at the border. People say, well, why are you showing all these images and why are you talking about this other thing when it doesn't have anything to do with what's important? This is what's been going on in this country for decades. Just... Dating for fun. Dating for fun and making sure you absolutely, because the worst thing that can possibly happen to you is you have a baby. Oh my God. Oh, I can't believe you got pregnant. Oh no, it's so awful. That's what's been going on in America for decades. Unless it's all pre-planned. Unless both of you have graduated college and you both have doctorates and you've taken some time to travel the world and you're both in your early 30s and you both have 850 credit scores. If you have a baby, you're irresponsible. How are you possibly going to raise a child to have the skills for the jobs of the future? 
And look what's happened. And look what has happened. It has been an unmitigated disaster, and this is America's legacy right now. This is the legacy of America. And the only thing, the only thing that they can do right now is military psyops to keep you from seeing it. That's the only thing they can do right now is encourage, you know, okay, fine, you know, this generation that is so enamored with LGBTQIA, whatever, and just dating for fun and all this, we need to let them die. We need to just let them run out the clock and let them die and replace the Americans with new ones, ones that know this truth. That which is alive is known death, and that which is dead can never die. For in the circle of the Spirit, life is naught and death is naught. Yea, all things live forever, though at times they sleep and are forgotten. You going to do it? You going you gonna to put drywall up? You going to run insulation? Are you going to do it just as fast, just as good as these crews that are coming across the border? For what they're doing it for? Of course you're not. Of course you're not. You're not going to pick up a hammer. Neither is your kid, even if you have kids. And even if those kids sure as hell aren't going to have kids that they're going to teach to pick up hammers, that's for sure. You're going to teach your kid, oh, you know what? Hard work is its own reward. Hard work. You spent 20 years out on a, as a, you know, street worker. That's nothing to be ashamed of. Not in his crowd, it isn't. You going to do this? Who? Your neighbor's kids? You see, that's the problem. You think houses are expensive now. Just imagine what, how expensive they would be if everybody who was laying the foundations, running up the frames, putting on the stucco, laying the brick, putting on the roof sheeting, hammering in every the drywall, the insulation, the electric. If it was all American workers working for what Americans think they deserve, do you know how expensive a house would be? Do you know how expensive a house would be? You think you can't afford it now? Still don't think it's a battlefield of the mind? Trust me on this one. There are things worse than inflation, and they're coming. I'll leave it there. Once again, brand new video. If you like the more adult version of this video, join us over there. Trust me. It'll be worth the dollar. It'll be worth your time. And once again, no risk. You've got 90 days to figure out whether it's worth your time. Way past the election. No matter who gets in, no matter who gets in, if they quote-unquote fix the border, we're screwed. We are absolutely screwed. It has a lot more to do with uh, what people in my generation think is going to pay for Social Security in 20 years. Hint, hint. Taxes that ain't being paid by Americans, I'll tell you that right now. One U.S. dollar, that's it. Even less if you sign up for an entire year and fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked. God bless. Thank you guys so much. I very much appreciate it. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.